Hello all, welcome back to another video. This video will be a continuation from the previously uploaded video. Be sure to check that out first before watching this. We will be using the C++ source code and the Python script from the previous video and build on top of it here. The first part of the video will be provided in the video's description so be sure to check it out. In this video, we will be showing how we can implement encoding and encryption into our shellcode launcher and investigate how we can bypass Windows Defender. We will be showing Base64 encoding as well as XOR encryption, following which we will also demonstrate a fully updated Windows Defender bypass on our Windows 11 machine. Implementing additional features onto our existing shellcode launcher is pretty easy. We will need to implement the encoding or encrypting routine onto our Python script so that it performs it for us. And in our C++ source code, we will need to have the relevant decoding or decryption routine so that the shellcode can be executed. Let's explore Base64 encoding first. In Python, this is pretty easy to do so. We can use Base64 encoding immediately after importing the Base64 library. After reading the payload.bin file as raw bytes, we can use Base64 encode to encode it. This will return us a Base64 encoded string. Let's generate the payload.bin raw shellcode file with MSF Venom, a reverse shell payload onto our Kali machine over port 8443. Before we actually implement it into the Python script and the C++ source code launcher for automation, let's verify if the Base64 encoding and decoding works. This should print out the Base64 encoded payload.bin shellcode file as a Base64 encoded string. Now let's copy the Base64 encoded string and paste it into our C++ source code. We will need to make a few changes in the C++ source code, such as implementing the Base64 decode function in it. In C++, this can be done via the crypt string to binary A function that is available in the Windows crypt header file. The function will actually perform the writing of the memory for us. We can remove move memory function here. Alright, this should do it. First, we allocate some memory according to the size of our payload. Then we perform base64 decoding and write the decoded bytes into the memory allocated. Then we use create thread and wait for single object for the shellcode execution. Let's compile this and make sure that we include the linker command for the wincrypt function. Let's transfer the exe over to our windows and see if this works. Windows Defender is currently turned off so that we can verify if the shellcode launcher works first. Awesome, it worked. Now let's hop over to our windows machine and turn on Windows Defender. Surprise, surprise. Windows Defender is able to detect our shellcode launcher file as malicious, flagging it as a metapreter file. This is despite our payload being Base64 encoded. This means that Windows Defender is able to decode the Base64 encoded payload and analyze it, detecting it as a metapreter payload. Modern AVs will be able to do this. Base64 encoding as a means for bypass no longer works. Now let's explore XOR encryption instead. XOR encryption is pretty simple to do so. It is basically taking the payload bytes and performing a XOR operation against a key. XOR decryption is basically the same thing. In order to implement XOR encryption in Python, we can use the following lines of codes. Let's set the key for the XOR encryption to be the string secret. The following two for loops will then take the payload bytes and perform XOR encryption on it, which is the upper arrow character shown over here. We will need to format the payload to be printed since it will be in raw bytes format. This is explained in the first part of our shellcode launcher video. So if you haven't watched it, please check it out. Awesome. Now let's copy over the XOR encrypted shellcode bytes printed out in our C++ source code file. Similarly, we will need to implement the XOR decryption function in our C++ source code so that the encrypted payload can be decrypted and executed in our program. Again, this can be done via the upper arrow character as shown over here, which is the XOR operation. 
Alright, this should do it. Let's compile it and transfer it over to our Windows machine and give it a shot. Windows Defender is able to pick it up. This is pretty interesting. This means that Windows Defender is able to perform XOR decryption on our payload and analyze it, detecting it as a metaprinter payload. It's pretty cool. To prove this, let's change the C++ source code to contain a wrong password instead. If the wrong password is in the source code, Windows Defender should not be able to decrypt the payload and analyze it. Of course, we will not be able to execute it as well since it is the wrong password for the decryption. As shown over here, no more Windows Defender detection. Very interesting. There is definitely some kind of sandbox detonation going on. Let's try to bypass that. The easiest and the simplest method is to add in some conditions so that the sandbox will be unable to execute our payload. One way we can do this is to implement arguments into our program. This means that we will add an if condition to check if there are any arguments supplied during the execution of the program. If there is no arguments supplied, the program will not execute. If there is any arguments supplied, then the shellcode launcher will execute as per normal. Do you think that this simple method will work? Let's find out. Alright, we have added in a if condition to check if there is any arguments supplied. It can be any argument. There is no further checks on it. You can implement more checks if you want to. Right now, it is just checking that there is at least one argument supplied during the program execution. Whoa, our payload can land on this now. This is insane. Let's try to execute it without any arguments. As expected, it didn't execute the shellcode because we need to have at least one argument supplied. Now let's try to execute again with any arguments. Awesome, we are able to successfully bypass Windows Defender detection, establishing a functional reverse shell. Now, we can automate the whole process with our Python script again similarly to what we did in our first video. If you haven't watched our first video on the Shellcode Launcher program, please check it out. That is all to this part 2 of our shellcode launcher program video. I hope you have found the video to be interesting and useful. I have recently created a free phishing course available on Udemy. This phishing course is completely free and it is only about 30 minutes long. Several phishing techniques and popular tools such as Gofish is demonstrated in the course. The link to the free course will be available in the video's description. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye.